Welcome to How To Videos from Bugspray.com. Today I'm going to go through the process of spraying with image nutsedge killer. I happen to have a few areas in my lawn that are uh, showing some signs of nutsedge so I want to go ahead and take care of that before it becomes a big problem. I'm also going to be using the turf mark with that. Uh, anytime I do a herbicide or insecticide application where I need to know where I'm putting the product uh, it's a good idea to use the turf mark. It's very inexpensive and really this bottle's probably lasted me two years. It goes a long way. In addition to that, I'm going to use spreader sticker, and that's just going to allow it to adhere to the plant much better and be absorbed much quicker. It increases absorption and translocation of the insecticide or pesticide uh, or herbicide, whichever you happen to be using, even fungicides. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, just a couple of quick tips. Have a uh, measuring cup on hand so you can make sure you're putting the proper amount in. I always like to put just a little bit of water in the bottom and again I measure that too so I take that into account with my measurement and the reason I do that is when that water's in there it's going to help prevent the insecticide from sticking. Make sure that you shake whatever insecticide you're using really well. A lot of these insecticides have more than one component so they tend to settle out and if you shake them up real thoroughly you can prevent that from happening. So with this particular product, it says two and a half ounces per gallon. I've already read the label. And if you're not familiar or you've forgotten how much, make sure you do read the label. Uh, and the reason for that, if I apply five ounces to a gallon, I could very well kill my grass. So that's not something I'm interested in doing. On the spreader sticker, uh, two tablespoons to a gallon. And last but not least, the turf mark. And you need next to nothing for this. It says one ounce to a gallon. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be mixing up two, two uh, gallons in my tank, my backpack sprayer. So one. This one's got a measuring cup built in. You just squeeze the container. And when it's full, it'll pull back whatever's left when you release. And two. And just like with this, I like to make sure there's some water in the bottom of my tank before pouring this in, simply because it keeps the insecticide from settling to the bottom right away. So I usually fill the tank about half full. Pour my mixture in. Pour a little bit of water in here to you might do that a couple times and then I'll go ahead and fill the rest of the way. And one other thing I want to point out, you don't want to stick your hose down inside of the tank. Holding it above is a much better idea. I've actually seen some people actually drop their hose down inside and as it fills up, the hose is sitting right down inside the uh, herbicide or insecticide. And you don't want to do that for two reasons. One, you don't want somebody to come along later and drink out of it. And two, if you're leaving that hose in there and the pressure at the street drops, if you don't have a, black, a backflow preventer, which is why that water keeps squirting out, if you don't have a backflow preventer installed on your, on your uh, hose outlet, there's a good chance that that water will get sucked right out of your tank and right into the city's water system. So make sure that whenever you do this, you have a backflow preventer or you make sure you don't get your hose in the liquid. Both would be preferably. Okay, once you have everything in the tank, make sure your cap's on properly. Shake it up. And you're ready to spray them. Okay, I wanted to give you a good close-up of some nutsedge. 
this is the nuts edge. It's a, a grassy looking plant. It starts in the center and it sends off little uh, leaves in, uh, in all directions. And if you actually break off one of the leaves and you look at it from the edge, it kind of makes a V-shaped. Uh, you can see it there. Those are some pretty telltale signs of nutsedge. Now one of the things it says on the image label is don't uh, spray it on lawns that are stressed or not fully uh, grown in yet. So I've got emerald zoysia in my backyard and that's where actually the worst part of the uh, nutsedge problem is. But I'm going to have to wait a couple weeks before I apply to the backyard. So I'm going to head out front to where the Bermuda is and it's in pretty good uh, and it's thriving really well and I can go ahead and do an application there. Okay, like I said, the nutsedge problem isn't nearly as severe in my front yard, but you can see here there's some plants uh, that are poking up through this Bermuda. And like I said, the Bermuda is, it's in well enough that it can, it can withstand a slight spray, so uh, you just spray it to wetness. Go ahead and pump up the sprayer. And, just, and you can see I've got that turf mark in there. And that'll show up for a day or two, or through at least one rain. Okay, I've been applying it, and you can see any place where it's a little bit greener uh, up in here as well. As it turns out there was a lot more nut sedge in this lawn than I thought. It, it's uh, when it's short and it's close to the grass, it's kind of hard to see. But as you walk around and you really focus in, you can start to see it. And of course, as I spray it, it becomes more apparent and it stands out a little bit more. But uh, in a few days to a week uh, it'll start to brown up and by two weeks it'll be dead. The one thing that I want to mention about nut sedge, it's the one insect, it's the one weed that uh, a variety of its uh, herbicides can't kill. Trimac, Trimac Classic, Trimac Plus. Uh, I've even tried killing it with Roundup and Finale in some areas of my lawn and it just would not die. So whenever you have a problem with nut sedge, make sure you use an image. It's going to be the product that will do the best job for you. And thank you for watching this how-to video from BuckSpray.com.